Solasta, Crown of the Magister. Some months ago I saw a Let's Play video on another channel about an isometric RPG based on the D&D rule set, which according to this channel's YouTuber was a better and richer experience than Baldur's Gate 3. The game, Solasta, Crown of the Magister. Now I wouldn't say that Solasta is a better game than Baldur's Gate 3, more that it's a slightly different type of RPG even though both use the famous tabletop D&D rule set as the base. Like I said in my earlier video about Solasta, Crown of the Magister, this is an isometric RPG created by the small French studio Tactical Adventures. Tactical Adventures, according to its website, only employs 17 people and a house cat. The focus in this game is more on the tactical combat than on story and side quests. But with regards to the story, there's still plenty to enjoy. The game has been available in early access, but since May the 27th of this year, 2021, you can buy and play the full game. So here's the full review. Story. While Solasta uses the 5.1 D&D rule set, this takes place in a whole new world with its own history, geography and myths. This world is called, conveniently, Solasta. Solasta used to be a place inhabited by the standard fantasy races, elves, dwarves and halflings, but no humans or gods. This changed with a mysterious disaster called simply the Cataclysm, in which both humans and gods appeared. As a result, the ancient elven empire fell, most of its former lands becoming either part of new countries or a place called the Badlands. A place where bandits, orcs, goblins and the undead roam unchallenged, but where intrepid adventurers can find riches and glory. Much of your time is spent in these badlands. After building your party, your first mission is to find out what happened to the garrison of a fort situated next to the outskirts of the badlands. Here you come across the Sorak, a legendary race of evil lizard people once thought to be extinct. And during the game, it's your job to find the tools to stop them. The setting is your basic standard fantasy fair, a leafy, European and medieval type of world with much of the standard fantasy monsters to fight. Orcs, giant spiders, goblins, undead and lizard people. And the story itself probably won't win any prizes in originality as well. But yes, this may not be the most original of games, it still feels that way at least. And according to Tactical Adventurers, the focus is mainly on tactical combat. Races and classes. Since Tactical Adventures got the license for part of the D&D universe and they are a small studio, the number of races and classes you can pick for your characters is limited. You can pick humans, elves, half-elves, dwarves and halflings. Elves, dwarves and halflings do however each have two sub-races you can choose, each with its own benefits. And the classes are as follows, Cleric, Fighter, Wizard, Rogue and Paladin. However, when you level up, you will have more choice in how to develop each character. So if you replay the game, you can develop your character differently. In the complete version of the game, characters can level up to level 10. This was level 6 in Early Access. Your party has a maximum of 4 characters, with a couple of NPCs joining and leaving you at various points in the game. Gameplay. It's in the gameplay where Solasta truly is a cut above the rest. It's always difficult to convey the D&D tabletop experience to video games. And while games like the original Baldur's Gate and Pathfinder Kingmaker were great in offering a well-rounded fantasy role-playing experience, according to some tabletop purists, they still weren't the same thing. With Solasta, almost every action and decision your characters make in the game whether in dialogues or in combat, is done through a dice roll. Very much like playing a pen and paper or tabletop game. Combat is near perfect in this game. Inspired by classics such as XCOM, combat is turn-based and done on a 3D map. Your characters and your enemies can move both left, right, etc. but up and down as well. Getting the higher ground is key many times in a fight. Fights are almost never boring or repetitive and you have to decide which tactics and combat techniques works best. 
Well, apart from the random counters on the map, that is. Those are from the start quite easy, but at least these will give you some extra loot and XP. Traveling is done on an extensive map of the region and you have to take enough food with you each time you travel. Both traveling and resting consumes food. In game, during a quest, you can use the map of the local area to fast travel between different locations. This is a very convenient option, especially when you clear the particular area of all enemies and loot. A feature other games could stand to copy, in my opinion. Anyone who's played an RPG in his or her day would have no trouble in using the inventory and character sections. This is all self-explanatory and there is a tutorial, which you can turn on and off. However, your character's XP is shown only when you put your mouse pointer on your character's face in the inventory screen. I didn't know about this until I read a Steam forum. Overall, however, gameplay is near perfect, in my humble opinion. Graphics. The graphics in this game are a bit of a mixed bag, which, since this is an indie game, can be expected. The different areas, buildings, dungeons, etc. are all of a good quality. Special effects during battle are pretty impressive. Where the game falls short a little bit is with the character models. These look like they were made in 2006. Especially during dialogues this is noticeable. But when compared to the other qualities in this game, this can be overlooked. Sound. Celasta has a decent, albeit not particularly memorable, soundtrack. The music during the intro, traveling or battle does the job and is never invasive. Voice acting is of a high level. Almost all dialogue is spoken and this is done pretty well. This is the case with most indie games right now. I remember playing Drakensam The Dark Eye, a decent German RPG from 2007 or thereabouts. And while the gameplay and the graphics were good, the voice acting in the game was absolutely atrocious. Not so the case with Celasta. Here all the main characters and NPCs are voice acted and the overall quality of the actors is pretty good. Conclusion Solasta Crown of the Magister is one of the freshest, best new RPGs out there right now. It's just so fun to play. And while you can see at times that it was made by a small studio, you can also see quite clearly that this game was made with a lot of love and effort. Tactical Adventures really captured the soul of a D&D campaign. Different character types engaging each other in banter, and different ideas on how to tackle a quest and dice rolls for everyone. As I said, combat is the best feature of this game. Every big fight is like a nice puzzle, much like classics as XCOM or Divinity Original Sin 2. And while the game uses the standard fantasy tropes you would have seen in many many other games and books, this still feels like a very original RPG. I would recommend Solasta Crown of the Magister to any RPG lover out there and I'm giving it a solid 8 out of 10. You can play the full game on PC, which is available on Steam and GOG.com since May the 27th.